I've been chased out the water by sharks on two occasions. I've been bumped off once. I rescued a guy from a shark attack. I've had dolphins almost jump and land on me. I've had a seal try to attack me. I'm the, I'm the ocean whisperer, I think. <laughs> I love it. Aloha, everybody. This is Mark Sorichu, your host for the Christian Surface Talk Story Podcast, where we talk about reaching every surfer and every surfing community with the good news of Jesus. Please join us for conversations from pro surfers to pastors and everyone in between who are aiming to make a positive impact in their lineups and leave the water a better place for the kingdom. Please check us out on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes, and we'll talk to you soon. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. You got some water? I've got some water in my water bottle. It's a green machine. I love it. Keeping uh, the sustainable drinkware, saving the earth, Shannon Izzy. Thank you so much. Welcome to the uh, Christian Surfers Podcast Talk Story. Shannon, I know you and I have been talking off and on uh, for what seems like a year on Facebook and WhatsApp, uh, and we know you're extremely busy. So thank you for making time uh, for us today to catch up and talk. God is a God of miracles, guys. We've got Shannon on the line finally. So, And I'm back. I'm your host, Mark Sawyer True. Took a little hiatus there with the baby and COVID. Gaining some weight, as you can see now from the round Asian donut face. But I'm back with Shannon for the first episode in a while. Casey Cristiano actually covered for me uh, with two amazing podcasts when I'm gone. And I'm sure he did a much better job. So those will be coming out soon. So watch out for those. And if you like Shannon, make sure you subscribe uh, either somewhere on the page, top, bottom, left, right, down below. Just click everywhere. Subscribe to Christian Surfers if you love his story and want to hear some more like him so shannon this is like episode i have no idea because uh only the lord knows we took a we took a hiatus but we started these uh last year and uh we just wanted to introduce to the world some of the amazing people um that have been involved in and out of christian service for the years and your name came up in a few meetings you've got a long history with us and you know for some of the newer surfers or some of the newer missionaries you know they may not know who you are but uh, i remember uh, you were in some of the bibles uh the og like christian surfer bibles back in the day um we've had a few updates since then and i think we're, we're trying to update them uh some more so but it is it is a lot of work to put together uh the bible project but shannon um you're south african yeah uh, living in norway and you've been up to a lot, uh, and and I don't want to pigeon you as a hold as the guy the uh, guy that had the double shark attack. But that's kind of how most people, whether they were in CS or not, uh, kind of came to know of you through that media. And and how long ago was that event? Was that like 10, 15 years ago now? Yeah, that was a bit longer than that. It's time flies. Oh wow! That um, happened. You don't look that old. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I was very young when it happened too. So. It okay. happened 21 years ago. Wow. Uh, which makes me 36. I don't yep. feel 36, so yeah, you know, still, still feeling quite good and young. Uh, looking very handsome and always a grommet on the inside out, Shannon. So, okay. so you're 36 now, so that was 21 years ago. I'm really bad at math, even though I'm Asian. So I'm going to cheat real quick. So 15, you got attacked when you were 15. That's correct, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and which which part of South Africa? Which uh, which wave was that? Um, a place called Nahoon Reef in East London. So that's like um, yeah. four hundred kilometers up the coast from Jeffreys Bay. Um, and yeah, East London's got some amazing waves, like unbelievable waves. But then it's also got some unbelievable sharks <laughs> uh, <laughs> to go along with it. You have to, yeah, you have to. Um, Make sure that you prepare to jump in the water with good waves and big sharks. Uh, it's a great place to be, and it's not always that crowded. Mostly yeah. because sharks chase away people, but uh, it's a good place. Well, you're a very brave man for surfing that spot, and you're very brave for surfing Norway, too. So you're just courageous all around, brother. Uh, I love it. And, you know, South Africa is known for being pretty sharky. Uh, is that spot that you were at, is that more sharky than others, or is it just kind of all over the place? Yeah, I suppose it is in a way. Um, East London had a reputation of having like some of the most fatal shark attacks in the world, especially the place right. I was attacked at called Nahoon Reef. And, uh, um, but, you know, the whole coastline 
is very sketchy and dangerous in the winter months because we have the sardine run. So the sardines, which are fish, swim up the coast from Cape Town through to Durban. And obviously bigger fish follow them and then you have the sharks that follow them and that's when um, a couple of the attacks happen. So the whole yeah. coastline is quite intense and um, it's like a feeding frenzy in the winter months, but obviously the fish and the sharks th uh, swim through all the reefs and Nahoon Reef um, connects to other reefs and so the sharks just follow along um, those reefs. So yeah, that's why East London is a little bit worse than most places in the country. <laughs> well, Shannon, you know, there's, there's obviously been um, a couple of shark attacks since then. You know, there's more people in the water than ever before. Uh, we've got drones now. Uh, you know, we've overfished a lot of, you know, the food supply chains in the world. And so, you know, there's, there are a lot of reasons why we maybe hear about it a bit more. But I, I felt like you were on the forefront at 21 years ago. You didn't hear about it that much. You know, now it's, it's quite common. You hear about it, you know, maybe once a month or something like that, someplace in the world, uh, Hawaii or Australia or South Africa. Uh, you know, and then you had Mick Fanning. You were kind of like, for me, like the trendsetter. You were like the shark attack before the shark attacks. But has, has there been another shark attack that somebody yours where it was two sharks? I felt like that is just so unique what happened. And obviously God's prevented, you know, providence and hand upon you, protecting you and, and keeping you alive uh, in that, that crazy moment. And, and now obviously, you know, sharing your testimony about it, you know, uh, thousands of times. Has there ever been another shark, double shark attack since yours? Mm, not that I know of. <laughs> yeah. um, you got the claim to fame. Mine's the only double shark attack ever recorded. So even if someone right. says that there has been one, which there might have been one, um, no one's ever seen it. So yeah, I don't yeah. think there have been actually. Uh, I'm the I'm the lucky one. That's it. You're the anointed one, <laughs> at least in this area. You've got the courage for it. So that's probably why the Lord's given it to you. Guinness Book of World Records, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ten and whether he wants it or not. Don't try to top that off with uh, uh, three killer whales in Norway. So we'll, we'll just keep it with the, the double <laughs> great whites. I've had three killer whales. You know about that story, though, of course. No. Tell me about it. Oh, well, I was also chased by two killer whales, which was also cool. Really? really so, um, I, think, I think the fish was in Norway? Really yeah, that was in Norway. Okay. This was okay. during a surf contest a couple of years ago. I was busy paddling back after a wave, and as I was paddling back, I saw this big, dark, black thing swim straight at me. And in my mind, I thought it was a shark, but at the same time, right. I thought to myself, it cannot be a shark because I'm in Norway. It's too cold for the sharks up here. Um, and as I thought that, this, this big killer whale swam right underneath me, and it yeah. slowed down and stared at me like this, and I could see its white belly. It was so amazing, massive, wow. scary black and white, and, um, and as it swam underneath me and past me, another one was coming straight towards me. And I was like, oh no, there's two. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Again? I couldn't believe it. And, exactly. And then um, fortunately that one slowed down and they swam away. And it's on video, so um, it's really cool. The crazy thing is that I had a dream like two years before that, that I'd be chased by two killer whales, and there it was. So um, God warned me before it happened. There you go. The gift of prophecy, Daniel. Uh, like in Daniel, Shannon, that's, that is scary on both accounts. Which one's scarier, though, the, uh, the sharks or the killer whales? I was more afraid in the moment, in the beginning, with the killer whales because I was aware yeah. of what was going on. But the shark attack, um, when it right. actually attacked me, I never knew what was going on. I thought I was dreaming, yeah. so I wasn't scared yeah. in the moment. But later on, when I saw my fingers hanging off and realized that I was just attacked by the sharks, that's when I started panicking. But definitely the two sharks, because once they smell and taste blood, they just want more. So um, that one was the, the most scary for sure. Right. Well, history Hall of Famer here, guys, uh, Shannon, with uh, double, double sharks and double orcas. I don't think anyone can top that nor wants to top that, Shannon. So we'll let you keep the record there for the world title. Um, is that one of the reasons why you moved to Norway was to kind of get away from the sharks in South Africa? Or was there just a, a, an opportunity from the Lord saying, hey, I want you to come up here and just help, um, you know, change the surf, uh, leave the surfing community up here uh, in the Schengen? 
Yeah, um, it's a good question. I mean, I, I obviously never left South Africa because of the Sharks. I'm not yeah. scared of them. But, um, yeah, just I think God opened the doors for me to come to Norway and I started working here. I work with amazing people. And yeah. um, I think one thing led to the next and I'm here basically permanently, which is super rad. Um, you know, I was in a, in a transition where... Um, I was like, I was running a surf school or surf business in South Africa where I was coaching like a whole bunch of top athletes surfing for South Africa and surfing the QS. And okay. um, I was in a transition where I was going to leave that and either move to Norway or even take over um, Christian surfers. I was asked to run that in South Africa, which I would love to have done. So I prayed about it and uh, spoke to a whole bunch of friends and leaders who were like speaking into my life and and I just felt God leading me to Norway. So that's the main reason why I came up here. Um, it's been an amazing walk and road um, to be on, but it's been super difficult at the same time because there's like no Christians here. Maybe just uh, like a few, like one or two. Um, wow. So it's been tricky, um, but uh, super good at the same time because people never, ever meet any Christians here. Like maybe maybe um one or two year and there but uh like people are shocked that i'm actually a practicing christian that i read my bible and that i pray and that i believe in jesus and that i believe that the bible is 100 percent accurate that they cannot believe that i believe that stuff so amen um, not um because of work but also just uh, to be a light and salt to all these people in the area preach it shannon i love it uh bring bring the heat up where it's cold <laughs> I love yes. it. And I mean, you and I are actually yeah. twins. Uh, Say again? I, you and I are actually twins. You may not know. Uh, I mean, I know we look very similar. Uh, you are better looking than I am, though. But uh, I'm your 46, uh, 45 year old Asian twin brother from Norway because I was I was born in Trondheim. You kidding me? Yeah, yeah. I was completely lost. I thought it was a Viking. I could uh, do <laughs> Nakadunosk. <laughs> yes, no, exactly. No, no it's great. That's cool. <laughs> I don't. I, I think uh, I was like, Yash Naka Ike, which is totally like horribly wrong, but it's supposed to be like, I don't speak Norwegian, but I know I didn't say it right. <laughs> I think oh, you my said dad it might Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, I was only, I was born there and literally left when I was one. I went to, uh, went to London, went to England for a year after that. And then, Taiwan and over to uh, to the States, to America, you know, uh, but um, I didn't start surfing or get to the coast until I was like 25. But um, I still love that that Norwegian heritage. I hope to make it back there one day uh, and I would love to see you and uh, finally meet in person because I don't uh, I think we were just talking earlier on the intro. Um, you asked me if we've ever actually met and I want to say that you came through L.A. about uh, 15 years ago or something like that. And I was just getting involved with Christian surfers and uh, just volunteering on leadership. Um, and you had emailed me and uh, I think you were um, just passing through. I don't know what you were doing and, and you were just looking for a place to stay. And, uh, and I think you ended up staying with a couple guys from the chapter. Is that, does well, that ring a bell? Were you coming through LA about 15 years ago? I was supposed to in about 15 years ago, but I ended up not going. And okay. I did go again around seven years ago, and I was in the States for three months, and I connected with some of the Christian surfers in, in L.A. I stayed nice. in, I, you know Wagner? Yeah, Wagner yeah, Faith. I, I, I was going to say, like three weeks. beautiful. And El Segundo. Yeah, right for there. sure. So I was there for quite a while, and I went to a couple of the churches there, and we had awesome. church on the beach with uh, Russ. Yeah, uh, Russ. Russ is the uh, super Russ Russell. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah, then I went back us. again um, two years ago, just for three weeks to see a friend. And but I was oh. quite busy because also there's an an author who's writing a book or a biography about my life, and he was he lives in Kentucky, so I went and hung out there for a while with him. So I was like there with like um, some other um, plans, not uh, well, other plans other than surfing. So yeah, I love that, Shannon. I do remember Faith and Wag saying something to me years ago. Uh, they were, you know, some of the best leaders uh, I ever had on the, the South Bay chapter leadership team. They're still there holding down the fort, being a light 
uh, in LA in the darkness and South Bay, even though there's not an official chapter there anymore, you know, there's still a Christian server presence because of those guys. How did you find a guy in Kentucky uh, writing a book about your life? Uh, he, he contacted me like 12 years ago. It's been a super long and frustrating process to say the least because uh, it's been 12 years and it should have been done already. Um, but yeah, the book is done. It's ready. We're just like finalizing a couple of things and hoping that it would be published this year. Um, so yeah, he reached out to me, super nice guy. He's written a couple of books and um, he's a lawyer and um, he he's um, a teacher at some universities down that side as well. So yeah, that's, um, that's it's an exciting project. That's awesome. What's it going to be called, Shannon? Um, so far, we call it The Child of the Wild Coast. But okay. it could change. We're just waiting for, we're just getting some um, people's professional or uh, professional experts to give us some of their opinions and advice when it comes to like certain names of the chapters and the, the name of the book and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. For now, the child of the wild coast. That's awesome. That's, that's much better than what I would have said. I would have said like two sharks, two orcas, but this <laughs> is way better. Um, <laughs> Well, keep us posted on that, brother, because we we would love to support that. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm down to buy a copy wherever you sell it on Amazon or whatever, because, you know, your life is so interesting. I, I did want to go back to Norway real quick before we moved on is what year did you move there? Um, and then, you know, how, how long have you been there now? And then you said, you know, um, what's kind of surprising to me is you said, you know, most people there uh, aren't very familiar with Jesus followers. And I, I don't know, I just, maybe it's just the Norwegians I met. I thought, you know, it was kind of a semi-Christian country, maybe similar to the U.S. I know we're obviously going that post direction now, but um, what is the spiritual climate in Norway? Uh, is it, is it cold like the weather or is it just kind of agnostic? Um, and then praise God that you're there. Yeah. Um, I started coming to Norway since 2009 and okay. I've had a lot of bad visas or problems with my visas. So I've been coming on and off, um, at times only for three to six months. But now I'm here basically permanently, which is good. Um, and I was down south in Stavanger at first, and there, there are quite a few Christians there. Um, and also there's like a Bible Belt section a bit further down south called Christian Sun. And there's like a lot of Christians down that side. Um, <laughs> but Norway as a whole, um, you know, honestly, the people are so nice and amazing here. The nicest people ever. Um, and Norway has been based and founded on, on like Christian and biblical principles and values. And the whole constitution was based on the Bible and Christian belief. But it's changed. You know, people are very um, agnostic or a lot of atheists as well. And the other thing is uh, it's, it's normal to go through confirmation. So every single person goes through confirmation in Norway. But it's through the state church, and it's a kind of legalistic and traditional, okay. uh, more than anything else. So people go through right. confirmation where they learn all this information and have all this knowledge, and they never have the experience of Jesus and the experience of the Bible coming alive and the experience of their Creator. You know, um, right. so after confirmation, when they decide whether they want to continue to go or not, everyone chooses not to go because they've never had the experience. And that's why people are shocked when they meet a Christian who still believes because they've gone through confirmation. And for them, it was just fairy tales and informational knowledge and uh, not no experience. So, um, you know, people are, like, like I said, super nice. They're very helpful. They are kind and, and welcome in. Um, but when it comes to um, their spiritual life, I think that's kind of cold and dry at the moment. Uh, we'll see what happens in the future. And, you know, the good thing is people don't judge either. Like people are very open to everything and um, they accept everything. Like you, you get um, judged if you have a prejudice point of view against any kind of race or religious person, you know. So it's kind of good okay. people are really accepting you. That's awesome, Shannon. We'll leave it up to our Lord Jesus to pluck uh, an amazing, brave, handsome South African out of uh, – out of South Africa when he was 15 and bring him to Norway, uh, you know, to, to share uh, his message, his good news and be his light there. So um, tell me about that move. Um, you know, was, 
you said it was, you know, God had opened a door. It was, it was with surfing because you were already, you know, neck deep in it, really involved in South Africa, um, you know, really doing a lot of great stuff, especially on the performance and the competition side. And, you know, obviously, you know, Norway, not, you know, obviously uh, not as big of a surfing country as South Africa, but, you know, there's, I've heard there's plenty of great surf there, obviously a lot colder. Uh, so, but you know, you got, it's, it's cold, cold water surfing is getting more popular, right? Uh, and then it ever has, you know, it, it uh, kind of really came on the scene. I, I think want to say five or so years ago. Now more people are considering it more because people want to just kind of go somewhere warm before or tropical, but now people want to get away from the crowds and what, and they want to kind of get more adventurous and more raw, more, more real. And I feel like Norway's, um, have you seen that? Have you seen the crowd kind of change there since you've been there? hundred percent. You know, when I first came up here, um, I could see that surfing was a super new sport. There weren't that many surfers and, um, down South in Stavanger, there was, there was quite a solid surf community and super cool people. It's even, it's grown even more now, uh, since 12 years. And then we came up here to the Lofoten Islands, which is the most consistent place to surf in Scandinavia. Okay. And the waves are amazing. But uh, when we first came here, there were no surfers. Maybe like three or four people living here who surfed. And now there's wow. like hundreds of people living up here, which is really nice because the surf community has grown so much. Um, the surf industry has grown a lot as well when it comes to like surf schools, surf camps, uh, surf okay. shops. And uh, it's a really cool vibe. Um, and one of my plans was to develop surfing um, and have like um, like a young kids surfing all over the place, but you don't see any of that. We've tried for years to develop surfing in Norway amongst the kids and the youth, and it's I won't say it's impossible, but it's been almost impossible. No one likes it. It's strange. It's the weirdest thing wow. ever. But the crazy thing is as soon as everyone finishes school, and they travel and they go overseas and they experience or see a surf culture somewhere else, they're like, whoa, surfing, that's amazing. And they come back and they start surfing. And that's, um, it's exploded between, say, from 19 to 30 year olds. It's just exploded. So I think yeah. we need to create like some kind of surf culture amongst kids because surfing is very popular here. And you, although it's cold and super extreme, you don't feel it because you do, but uh, it's not that bad because you have boots, gloves, wetsuits that keep you super warm. They're very durable and flexible and comfortable. So we surf in like minus 10, minus 15 sometimes. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's, um, it's, cold. <laughs> it's cold. My hair freezes <laughs> on my head sometimes, you know. You just put the hood on, wear your gloves, your boots and everything, and you start it. And you for like four hours. So yeah, it's only this part that's exposed. That's it. Yeah, yeah I was, I was going to say, you know, have you noticed any other Asian or Norwegian surfers in the water? But you know, I guess, I guess you can only see the face. <laughs> you said Asian Norwegians. Asian Norwegians in the water. I could come yeah, back and be the first. Yeah, a couple. Yeah, I've, I've got a good friend Patrick, who's who's a Christian, and he's um, he lives down south most of the time. But he comes up here, and he's. I think he's from the Philippines originally. Okay. But yeah, he lives there. He's Norwegian and he's a super rare guy. He says all the time. So. I love it. I need to meet him. My doppelganger, you can introduce us. And, yeah, for uh, sure. <laughs> all the more reason to go back to my, my homeland, my birthland. So that is super interesting. Um, you know, and it's been great that you were kind of at the, the beginning, the forefront of that. You know, obviously surfing is really uh, blowing up globally because of COVID. Um, you know, a lot of people out of work, a lot of people uh, trying to find new activities to, to be outside. And it's not a, a stick and ball team sport where you've got a lot of close contact. It's, you know, by its nature, it's, it's an individual sport. WSL, you know, a lot of things have really made surfing popular over the years. And I've seen it here in the Canaries and obviously in California, just, you know, it's kind of um, the, the participation numbers are through the roof. But it is interesting that you said you said that about the kind of like the the surf grom culture that you would see the grom culture you'd see in australia with all, all the board riders clubs um the podcast we did with daniel in uh cs canada was similar you know very kind of cold climate um and there wasn't a lot of groms that surfed you know and, and even in la with, with, i don't know if you know wagon faith just because you know the for living in la being so compact and so expensive to live in it's hard for groms to get to the beach Unless, you know, their parents are millionaires, they happen to live right there and then they can surf, but it's hard to kind of 
get a ride, you know, and, and, um, you know, grow up surfing at the beach. And so, uh, it's interesting how there's all these little subcultures with different demographics and psychographics, depending on where you're at in the world. But I love, I love it. Cause that's such a CS vibe, right? It's just having all the groms propped up and, uh, just that, that, you know, faith like innocence and just, just the stoke that they, they share with the community. So we'll be praying for that in the communities up there, line in a fire in the youth, Shannon, uh, in Norway. And then I wanted to ask you, were you already a Jesus follower um, when the shark attack happened? Uh, is, is that, did you kind of grow up in the church or in, in the faith and then, you know, just kind of got sent off to Norway? Um, yeah, I, I used to go to youth and some sun surf, or it used to be called sun surf, but Christian surf is right. in South Africa. Um, but I had never experienced Jesus. I had never had a proper encounter. Um, you know, I, my parents are Christians now and they weren't really back in the day. Like my dad used to, um, send us to church every single Sunday, but he never used to go. So we were kind of forced to go to church when I was super young and I never believed in God. And I never like really believed that he cared about me because we had like a super, um, difficult upbringing at times and I suffered and struggled with a lot of personal issues which I asked God to help me with and nothing ever happened um, mm -hmm. at the time <laughs> and uh, but yeah on the day of my shark attack I had the most incredible and the most amazing experience ever where when I thought I was going to die and be eaten alive by these two sharks I prayed and cried out to Jesus and asked him to save me and he did and the best thing is after that um, because of that little shift in my heart, I prayed and asked him to help me with my emotional and my mental and my social issues as well. I used to suffer with a lot of depression and suicidal thoughts and anger and yeah. frustration and many other things, you know. And um, I remember like waking up in the morning in hospital after the operation saying, oh, wow, God, like that was amazing. Like, please, can you help me with these other things in my heart and in my mind, which are way more difficult and way more scary and way more intense than a shark attack. They can eat yeah. you up a lot but no one can tell. And um, honestly, the next day I felt a huge shift in my heart and my mind. And I just felt like God gave me so much more peace and hope and joy and life and purpose. It was the best thing ever. And that's when I really started following Jesus. So before that, I was like trying to like, do good things and be a good person or be a different person, but nothing ever changed inside of me until the day of my shark attack. And, um, and then when certain friends and family saw that I was like really devoted and following Jesus, that's when they thought I was crazy. And, um, uh, but eventually that rubbed off onto them and it affected and influenced them too, which is very good. Praise God. What a special story, Shannon. I know you've shared it many times, but it is, so real, you know, people used to say, you know, there's never an atheist in a plane crash. And I always said, there's never an atheist in a shark attack. Uh, <laughs> you know, I would try to translate that for surfers and you've lived that firsthand and it, and it has really catalyzed your life. And that, that truth of the gospel has really become real for you. Um, I just, I just, and I love that you've just been so open about your faith all these years. I really do hope that uh, you and I get to finally meet in person and share a wave soon, hopefully somewhere warmer, but I'll go surf cold water for you. <laughs> Um, we can get some barrels together. That's it. That's it. Uh, I might be barrel dodging if it's uh, below, uh, you know, 40, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which I don't know. That'd be like five degrees Celsius or something. <laughs> uh, I'm warm blooded. But with the uh, community surfing team uh, in Norway right now, I know, are you still doing the schools? And are, is there any involvement with like the Olympic surfing uh, guys and gals up there? Yeah, I mean, we do, we do have some schools that come for surf lessons and coaching, but it's like a one-off thing. They don't follow up and take it uh, up as a sport afterwards. I am the national surf coach, so we do a lot of training with the national team. And we have maybe four or five juniors in the whole country who are under 18 who surf. Okay. Think about that. There's thousands of wow. surfers, but four or five juniors in the whole country. So we're really hoping that that changes. Um, and um, yeah. the senior team are guys from between, say, 25 to 45 years old. 
um, yeah. which is, I mean, good for them. But usually, like, a senior team consists of, like, uh, 19 to 30-year-olds because that's when you probably at your best or at your peak. So um, for us, yeah. we need to qualify for the Olympics. And I don't yeah. think that's going to happen now. <laughs> Maybe in a couple of years' time when we have some juniors who are frothing and shredding the, the lineups, um, then we can try to develop them, them into an Olympic surfer in the future. Interesting. So the Olympics that are happening in a few months in Tokyo, uh, there's going to be no representation from Norway um, in surfing at the uh, Olympic Games this year? Um, at the moment, no. So the only chance we have is we have um, a Norwegian who lived in Portugal um, okay. most of his life, who shreds him and his twin brother surfed the QS for a couple of years. And he's okay. the national champion. He's the only guy who who has the chance to make a couple of heats. No, I don't think the others can make more than one heat and you know we've spoken about this i'm not like saying anything bad about them and they sure they yeah they have served some of these international contests and they're fully aware of it um yeah. so yeah although they can make maybe one or two heats this other guy luca who's the na the current national champ he's probably able to make way more than that and obviously you you know how heats go like in a 20 to 30 minute heat you can yeah um, get lucky shred it and the other guys get act unlucky and then you just keep making it so he's our only hope but he has to make the final to be able okay. to qualify for the olympics so um we busy talking about that to see if it's worth um him going because he also has two kids he's got a newborn baby so it's quite tricky but yeah that's the only hope on him he's got to he's got to make the final at least to have one representative in the olympics this year yeah. Got it. Well, I'm rooting for you guys, Shannon, being part Norwegian, and you are bringing the hope of uh, heaven to those guys and uh, all those all those in the beaches and surfing community. So thank you for doing that. Um, I know that we had some mutual friends, um, the Balding Bishop and our favorite Ginger Vika Christian surfer's own uh, Rich Ellington come visit you in Norway. Uh, what were they doing up where up there with you? And did you have a chance to surf with them? Yeah, they were here for, I think, just four days. And they had such a rad time. They came to uh, film for one of the episodes and they interviewed me on my shark attack and my other shark experiences and my life experience. And it was quite cool. And uh, they did a few other crazy things too, like um, surfing in a speedo in <laughs> freezing water. It was so cold. I couldn't believe he did it. Um, but yeah, we got to surf together as well. It was small and super fun and clean, beautiful weather. So they had a great time here. Super rad guys. I love it. Yeah, those guys are legends. Hopefully you introduce them to some Norwegian killer whales, uh, yeah. especially if they're surfing in Speedos, they should not be doing that. But just <laughs> <laughs> hey, any, anything for views and clicks. No, their, their show is awesome. Um, you mentioned you were really involved with Christian surfers um, when you were younger um, and, and had the opportunity to actually uh, take over the, the leadership role in South Africa before you moved to Norway. Um, are you involved at all? Where Have you been uh, in touch with any of the Christian surfers guys in Norway uh, and, and their movement? Yeah, yeah, we, we are in touch and we do get to see each other occasionally, but not enough. Norway is quite a long country and I live way above the Arctic yep. Circle, and most of the guys are in an area called Hordovik, uh, Oslo, okay. and Stavanger. And for okay. me to, like, let's say, for example, fly to Stavanger, it's going to cost me, a return is going to cost me, like, six to eight hundred dollars. You know, it's like the same flight, it's the same price to fly back home to South Africa, so it's quite expensive. Um, there's no excuse, though. Um, but when I do go down south of Stavanger, I connect with one or two other guys who are part of Christian Surfers, and we've had one or two national um, meetings here and there or conferences here and there, which I've attended, uh, but not enough. Uh, occasionally, same as like the International Christian Surface Conferences are always in September. A lot of the time of the year, they're like in the peak season for me where like it's almost impossible to leave and get away from work. Um, yeah. But yeah, we do keep in touch. We have hung out and um, been at the conferences together and done a couple of things, which is super good. Um, there are no Christian surfers up here. Uh, I have had one or two You're in. and hang out. Yeah, I, I'm it, yeah, for sure. But there's no like official chapter up here, 
which yeah. uh, I think we need. Uh, it's been it's been on my heart for sure, but it's been quite tricky because um, there's <laughs> there's not much up here when it comes to Christian community. There is a church that I go to occasionally, and the pastor and the youth pastor. Um, are friends of mine now, and they've both started surfing, which is amazing. And we've spoken about doing something together in reaching the surfers. And this year has been quite tricky because of COVID, and you can't meet up in big groups yeah. and stuff. So we, we, we'll see what happens. And we've been thinking about it and praying about it and strategizing a little bit here and there. Um, because, like I said, there's such a small uh, Christian community, but now the pastor and the youth pastor of this church started surfing, and they're getting involved in the in the surfing community. So maybe, um, and hopefully, very soon we can do something here locally. I love that, Shannon. Well, if the Lord calls me back to Norway, uh, you'll be the first guy I uh, let know, and uh, I'll have to buy like a, a nine mil wetsuit. I don't think they even make those, but <laughs> you can make it. <laughs> Yeah, custom one. I won't even be able to paddle. I'll just be floating. You just have to push me into the waves and the surfing on uh, the neoprene. No, that is that is interesting. You know, that's definitely, uh, you know, the real life and, and uh, you know, so different. I feel like that here when I'm in the Canaries where it's obviously not a very uh, Christian um, ethos or environment. You know, it's like very kind of post-Catholic where, you know, San Clemente, California, that's the Bible Belt of not only Orange County, but of the whole state and, you know, there's a, there's a great church on every corner. Of course, there's more like, you know, uh, yoga studios and different places now, you know. Um, but, you know, it's, it's you have your Christian radio, you have your Christian bookstores and all that kind of stuff. But places like where you're at now or where I'm at here, you know, like it, it is you really are, uh, you know, um, I really do believe that, you know, when you see a lot more darkness around you, your, your light shines brighter. So uh, keep up the great work up there, Shannon. Um, I did want to ask how people could... Because you, you mentioned, you know, uh, how expensive it is to live up there. I've heard that a few times. Uh, you know, I don't know how often now, especially now, like, you know, did you go back to South Africa a lot before COVID? Yeah, I, I usually go back once, twice a year, get to see okay. my family and friends. And we yeah. started surf camps in Sri Lanka and South Africa as well in the okay. winter months of the year, summer yeah. months down there. And uh, so I kind of escaped the cold and warm up and catch a tan again. <laughs> But, um, you know, I was back in South Africa almost uh, just over a year ago, just before yep. COVID hit very hard and everyone started locking down. So I haven't been back for a while. And I think I'll go back like at the end of the year, maybe. Okay. How, how could we, you know, be praying for you up in Norway or, you know, future plans that you might have? And now obviously hope, we're all obviously praying and hoping that things kind of open back up soon. Uh, I will speak to all the all the guys and gals and say, hey, we need to do an international conference in Norway so you can make it. <laughs> that would be epic, man. Super epic. Well, um, you we'll know, bring the conference to you if you can't come to us. I would love to go to you guys as well, for sure. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's so cool to travel and meet up with all the guys. I've been to the international conference in Brazil, the one in France, the one in South Africa. And I miss the rest. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it will be super cool to have something here. And, and I did speak to Phil from the UK who runs the Christian Surfers there or who's in charge of the European uh, chapter. And he was going to uh, fly me up to the UK and join their, their Christian Surfers conference there. And that would have been super cool. So hopefully next year. But, um, you know, yeah, I mean, we always need prayer. I always need prayer. Uh, sometimes, um, as the only Christian surfer here, it, it is quite difficult. And although I do have some Christian friends, I don't get to see them much. It's, it's so different here. Um, maybe it's also different because of COVID, but I don't have any proper Christian community. So I've got some Christian friends. I see them like maybe every second or third or fourth week at times. And um, there's like one Christian meeting a week in the whole of the Lofoten Islands. And that's not enough to have a proper Christian community. So I think yeah. that's the thing I need the most. I don't um, have a Norwegian wife so, or, or a Christian wife, should I say. So um, that's, I don't have a community there either. So I think that's what you can uh, keep me in your prayers for and about. Um, the, that's the main thing for sure. And then obviously the second thing is... Um, just to continue being uh, salt and light, whether I have a Christian community or not. 
because sure. uh, we should never have any excuse, you know? So, yeah. yeah, I think those are the two main things. Amen, Shannon. Thank you for being so real, sharing your prayer request. I'll be praying for that on fire Christian wife for you and that Christian community to just, uh, you know, uh, just a revival in the hearts for people to be hungry and just come speak to you about uh, the God of the universe. Um, speaking of which, how could people uh, follow you on social media and keep in touch with you? Um, I know you've got all those different surf camps. I don't know, is the name called um, Go Surf or Surf Life? Go Surf, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and so do you have an Instagram or is there like a, a private uh you know, channel that you guys, that you have on social media where people yeah, can so kind of keep up with you? Yeah, so the, the Go Surf one is the is Go Surf Camps. Uh, but okay. my private one, which is probably the best one to, if you want to follow me and keep in touch, is just my name, Shannon Ainsley. Okay. And uh, it would be cool to keep in touch there. And, um, yeah, I don't use anything else. I don't use TikTok or Snapchat. <laughs> Not yet. Or, or Twitter. Nah. It takes us so much time. I want to get more barrels. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Less, less time scrolling. scrolling. Yeah. Less scrolling, more barrels. More barrels. Amen to that. I think we can all agree with you there. And, uh, you know, I don't think I know any other Shannon Ainsley. So you're the only one. You're the one and only in my book. Uh, the Shark Whisperer. Uh, you need to hang out with some more dolphins for your Christian community. Because I've always said that. I've always said that dolphins are just Christian sharks. So uh, I love you dolphins. Can... Hey. I've got I've got so many stories. You need like an hour with me to hear all my stories. I've had this is I've had I've been chased out the water by sharks on two occasions. I've been bumped off once. I rescued a guy from a shark attack. I've had dolphins almost jump and land on me. I've had a seal try to attack me. I'm the I'm the ocean whisperer. I think. <laughs> I love it. I love, I love it. The dolphins. They're, they're my friends. We like this, you know. Like this. <laughs> you guys are tight. <laughs> The Lord has anointed you for that job because he knows I would pull a Noah and run the other way, <laughs> uh, which is why I'm going to just stick to surfing in wave parks because there's not all the wildlife that you've got to deal with. Um, no, I love that, Shannon. That's, uh, that's amazing. Uh, you're, um, you're so brave and courage for, courageous for the gospel. And I, just, I know you just wear uh, you know, the good news on your arm and your sleeve. And um, we're, we'll be praying for you on those points. I wanted to kind of go into the lightning bolt round with you. We're going to have to do another podcast episode, like you said. We're going to do a 10-hour one for the second <laughs> one because uh, you got so many good stories. Uh, I know we've already gone over time on this one that I promised you on. So uh, thanks so much for being gracious. Uh, quick Christian Surfers lightning bolt round with you uh, to wrap it up. So here we go. Um, rapid fire questions, Shannon. Bodyboard, hand plane. Shortboard, longboard, fish, sup, or foil. What's your pick out of those? Shortboard. <laughs> Tried and true. Spoken Hands like down. an old school Hands surfer. <laughs> I love it. Beachy's Reef or Point Break? Point Break. Love it. Another good choice. Front side or backside? Front side. Okay. Single fin, twin fin, thruster, quad, bonzer, or alaya? Trust her all the way. Man, traditional performance surfer right here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, barrels, turns, or airs? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> um, turns. All right, there you go. Laying down the rail right here, Shannon. You got to learn more. You got to go coach with him in Norway. Uh, sushi or Mexican? I don't even know if you guys have Mexican in Norway. <laughs> With Mexican everywhere, but uh, Mexican's good, man. Can't yep. go wrong with that. I love it. Even with all the fishing in Norway, you're still choosing Mexican. I love that. Well, um, I choose Mexican this time. <laughs> <laughs> all the Spanish people are going to love you. Uh, favorite or least favorite wave in the world? Favorite is Jeffrey's Bay for sure, where I lived for like 15 years. And my least favorite, uh, Orient Beach. That's in East London. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Want, no secret spots Norway. named in Norway. <laughs> Say again? No, no. No secret spots named in Norway on this podcast. <laughs> I love great. it. Uh, last question for you, uh, Shannon. What has been the worst burn uh, for you and Christian surfers? Who's dropped in on you the worst? <laughs> Ooh. As if, please say Phil Williams. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
No. Oh, that's a good one. In Christian surfers. What? Mm. I'd say no one. No one. Wow, that's a good witness. That's, that's a good That's good. Really good. Good yeah. for them. Maybe, yeah, exactly. maybe, they, maybe I was just too fast in the wave and they couldn't drop in. I don't know, but uh, no one's it. had the chance yet. Do you want to be the first? Come no, visit me. No, I, no, I don't want to be the first, but you could, you could go on me, man. I, I am a super mellow surfer. No, that's, I was going to say, that's a great answer. Uh, unfortunately, when we finally get you to the Christian Surfers International Conference or when we bring it to you, there's going to be burn so me. many in the water. Yeah, exactly. It's going to happen. <laughs> If you're gonna get burned, get get burnt exactly. Get party wave with your brothers and sisters, or at least at least get burned by a legend. You know, Brett Davis, Roy Harley, Phil Williams. Those are the guys you want to get burned by. <laughs> Easy. I'll, I'll, I'll have party waves with them for sure. I love it. I love your grace, Shannon. Thank you so much for making time for us. Uh, we've got a lot more to talk about, so we've got to plan another podcast. It might take us another year, but we're gonna make it happen, or we're gonna do it in person when I get to Norway. Uh, we love you, brother. We're praying for you, brew. Um, and everyone, please make sure you follow and support Shannon uh, on his travels and his ministry uh, when we can start traveling again on social media. And uh, God bless you, brother. Thank you for all that you do uh, for the gospel and bringing the kingdom of heaven to Norway. Cool. Yeah, thanks yeah. for your time, man. And keep well. We'll speak soon. Thanks, Shannon. I love you, buddy. Oh, you too. Love you, bro. Cheers. Okay. You. Bye.